There were gatherings here, people coming together to make art, but specific representations of particular animals. It's the prehistoric landscape where mighty beasts roam and the survival of the fittest is the law of the land. But among the early chaos, the Neanderthals stood out not just for their impressive physique, but for the downright strange and unexpected things they did to navigate this ancient world. They were a special breed and left behind a trail of mysteries that have amazed scientists and storytellers alike. What secrets lie hidden in the fossilized remains of Neanderthal settlements? What unusual habits did they develop in their struggle for survival? Join us on an unforgettable journey as we delve into the weird things that Neanderthals did, unraveling the mysteries of our ancient kin in the dense landscapes of ancient Europe, where the mysterious Neanderthals once roamed. Neanderthals, scientifically designated as Homo, share our Homo genus with modern humans, Homo sapiens. What's captivating about their name is their origin in the Neander Valley of Germany, a place steeped in history and named after Joachim Neander, a German theologian and hymnist whose very last name translates to New Man. Around 400,000 years ago, these interesting beings emerged, leaving their mark across a wide expanse from the northern reaches of Belgium to the sun-kissed shores of the Mediterranean, and even into the heart of Central Asia. Imagine limestone caves scattered throughout this graphical region, acting as ancient time capsules, preserving Neanderthal bones with remarkable fidelity over tens of thousands of years. It's almost like nature herself conspired to ensure their story endured. These Neanderthals, often dubbed cavemen, due to their frequent association with these limestone sanctuaries, existed alongside other pre-human contemporaries like the Denisovans in Asia and Homo in Africa. In the humid realm of 1856, where quarry workers stumbled upon the first Neanderthal fossils in the Feldhofer cave, nestled in the Neander Valley near Dusseldorf, Germany. Among the treasures unearthed was a nearly complete skull, missing only its face and various arm and leg bone fragments. These weren't just bones. They were pieces of a puzzle challenging the understanding of our ancient people. As debates raged about whether these skeletal remains belonged to an ancient human or an entirely new species, the discovery of additional fossil skeletons in Spy Belgium in 1886 added weight to the argument that Neanderthals were a distinct species. The excitement and interest surrounding these groundbreaking moments. Fast forward through the annals of time and over 200 Neanderthal individuals have been unearthed, with more than 70 believed to be the young, the teenagers of their time. These discoveries span a timeline from over 200,000 years ago to 36,000 years ago, opening a window into a chapter of human history that's both distant and intimately connected to our own. While conventional wisdom holds that Neanderthals coexisted with Homo sapiens for about 10,000 years, some maverick scientists speculate that Neanderthals might have endured even longer. Consider the Iberian Peninsula, where whispers of their existence lingered as recently as 24,000 years ago. The possibilities of these two species, Homo and Homo sapiens, sharing the stage of prehistoric life, their stories intertwining against the backdrop of ancient landscapes, the allure of such a prolonged overlap in time beckons them to delve deeper into the secret of the shared past, ancient romance and unraveling genetic secrets. Neanderthals, our ancient cousins, were not just close genetically to early humans, but close enough to potentially engage in some interspecies romance and produce offspring. A prehistoric version of a Romeo and Juliet scenario, physically, they were more like us than we might have envisioned sharing a surprising resemblance that challenges common misconceptions. The Homo sapiens of yore had a unique physique designed for survival in their environment. While they might have seemed pretty similar to Neanderthals, there were distinct differences that scientists can spot when analyzing samples. It's like comparing two puzzle pieces that almost fit perfectly, but have interesting variations. In the world of ancient love affairs, Neanderthals weren't limited to encounters with humans alone. 
Fossil finds reveal a fascinating mix of Neanderthal, Denisovan, and other early human traits, creating a sort of prehistoric melting pot. Fast forward to 2010, and Svantapabo, the Indiana Jones of paleogeneticists, decoded the entire Neanderthal genetic sequence. Using skeletons from Croatia, he unraveled the genetic secrets of our long-lost relatives. Scientists continue to play genetic detectives, conducting tests on Neanderthal remains, and uncovering surprising connections between our DNA and theirs. Approximately 2% of Europeans carry a smidgen of Neanderthal nuclear DNA. It's like having a trace of a long-lost relative in our family tree. George Church, the maverick Harvard geneticist, even ponders the possibility of resurrecting a Neanderthal through cloning, envisioning a mind that could tackle problems in ways we haven't even dreamed of. Picture them strutting their stuff in clothing made from animal hides, perhaps sporting a stylish, poncho-like outfit. Fossil hints suggest they were the ancient leaders of weaving, threading, and basic fabric creation, a far cry from the basic image often painted. Recent discoveries indicate they stood tall and proud with straight spines. Throw out the arthritis-ridden reconstruction, these were resilient individuals facing the challenges of their time head-on. Ancient rock stars of evolutionary innovation. Neanderthals sported some truly unique physical traits that set them on a distinct path from modern humans. Their large eye and nasal openings weren't just quirks of evolution. Researchers believe these features weren't just for show. They were the Neanderthal version of night vision goggles, helping them navigate through low-light conditions with ease. The advantage this gave them as they braved the cold and dark terrains they called home. Those conspicuous openings also led to more significant sinus cavities. Think of them as having a built-in super sniffer. Neanderthals likely had a sense of smell that would put our modern capabilities to shame. It's like having a heightened version of a superhero's superpower, but in the ancient human world. Neanderthals weren't just a slightly different version of us. They were rock stars of the cranial world. Broader and shorter than our modern noggins, their skulls boasted a prominent brow ridge and a forehead with a casual slope. It's almost like they were the trendsetters of the prehistoric catwalk, showcasing a look that was both fierce and functional. The Neanderthal body, stocky and robust, with shorter limbs, especially in the arms and a broad chest, wasn't just an aesthetic choice. It was a survival strategy. Greater strength and endurance were the name of the game for Neanderthals, perfectly aligning with their physically demanding lifestyles. It's like they were the ancient version of gym enthusiasts, always ready for the next challenging workout. Their shorter stature and brawny build would make them stand out in a crowd of modern humans. It's like encountering a character from a time travel movie, someone who doesn't quite fit the contemporary mold but is undeniably intriguing. Rewind a bit to the early days of Neanderthal discovery. The first impression wasn't exactly accurate. Blame it on a Neanderthal skeleton with severe arthritis. This poor individual had a hunched over posture, creating an initial image that stuck in people's minds like a catchy tune. But guess what? Subsequent discoveries and advanced scientific techniques revealed that Neanderthals stood tall and proud, just like us. It's like rewriting the script of a blockbuster movie, the misunderstood hero finally getting the credit they deserve. Despite these scientific revelations, the outdated image of hunched and primitive Neanderthals still lingers in our culture. It's like a stubborn myth that just won't fade away. This misconception unfairly paints Neanderthals as less evolved and less intelligent than us, when, in reality, they were a species with complexities and abilities that mirrored our own. Break free from the outdated stereotypes and celebrate Neanderthals for the captivating and sophisticated beings they truly were. They weren't just extras in the human story, they were main characters with a tale worth telling. The fashionistas, artists, and possibly musicians of prehistory. Contrary to the common idea that Neanderthals were primitive cavemen who roamed without clothing or footwear, archaeological findings and scientific studies tell a different story. Picture this. Neanderthals inhabited colder regions than we do today, so staying warm was crucial for their survival. Fossil evidence reveals that they ingeniously crafted clothing from animal hides, resembling loose-fitting modern ponchos. These garments weren't just stylish, 
They provided the necessary warmth and protection to thrive in their challenging environments. Neanderthals weren't just fashionistas, they were also ahead of the curve when it came to foot protection. Despite not finding actual Neanderthal footwear, clues from wear patterns on their toe bones hint at some form of foot coverings. Living in harsh terrains and frigid conditions, they knew the importance of keeping their feet cozy. Neanderthal's artistic side is a topic that has sparked debates among scientists for years. It was once thought that they lacked the mental prowess for art, but recent discoveries are turning the tables. In Spain, cave paintings predate the arrival of Homo sapiens, suggesting Neanderthals were the artistic geniuses behind them. Abstract shapes and animal images reminiscent of human prehistoric art have been found, challenging the belief that Neanderthals were art amateurs. This revelation about cave paintings isn't just a game changer. It's a revolution in understanding Neanderthal cognitive abilities. It shows they were not just cavemen, but had the brains and artistic flair to appreciate symbolism, much like modern humans. It's time to rethink the stereotype that Neanderthals were less evolved or intelligent than Homo sapiens. In 1995, a bone with evenly spaced holes was discovered in a Slovenian cave possibly used as a flute-like instrument by Neanderthals around 43,000 years ago. Some researchers claim it's evidence of Neanderthal musical abilities, while others argue it could be natural or animal-induced. The ongoing debate adds an intriguing layer to the possibility that Neanderthals had a sense of music, rhythm, and sound, challenging the outdated view of them as primitive and unintelligent. While we await more concrete evidence, the idea of Neanderthals rocking out in prehistoric jams remains an exciting area of investigation, a saga of compassion and cannibalism. In contemporary vernacular, the term Neanderthal often conjures images of limited intelligence, a rough and barbaric demeanor, and an overall primal aura. Yet a more intricate exploration of Neanderthal skulls unveils a story rich in surprises. It turns out that Neanderthals possessed a considerable occipital brain volume, a cerebral region dedicated to visual processing. Although the frontal lobe of a Neanderthal brain was smaller than that of a modern human, implying distinctions in social cognition, it does not necessarily imply cognitive inferiority. Essentially, Neanderthals boasted larger brains in certain dimensions, throwing into question our assumed intellectual superiority. Contrary to the prevailing belief that the demise of Neanderthals was linked to perceived intellectual deficiencies, archaeologists underscore the lack of solid evidence supporting such claims. This challenges the notion that modern humans prevailed despite potential intellectual shortcomings. Interestingly, Neanderthals exhibited an extraordinary capacity for mutual care. Within an Iraqi cave, the remains of a Neanderthal named Shanidar I with physical deformities and deafness, survived until the age of 40, defying expectations. This suggests a remarkable level of support and care, even when the individual couldn't contribute to fundamental tasks like hunting and foraging. Similarly, the Neanderthal child with the skull labeled SH-14, afflicted with a brain deformity, was cared for and lived up to five years old, contradicting assumptions of potential abandonment. This compassion extended to how Neanderthals treated their deceased, with hints of specific burial rituals. But amid the heartwarming tales of care, there's a darker side to Neanderthal behavior cannibalism. The exact circumstances surrounding the demise of 12 Neanderthals in Cidron Cave, Spain, remain unclear, but their bones tell a grisly tale of cannibalistic practices. Among them, six children and six adults, perhaps a family, exhibited cut marks on various bones, including skulls and mandibles. Similar evidence has surfaced in Neanderthal remains in Belgium and France, alongside indications of using bones for crafting tools to refine flints. So, while we marvel at the compassionate aspects of Neanderthal life, it's crucial to embrace the complexities of their behaviors, a mosaic of care and regrettably, instances of cannibalism that add layers to our understanding of our ancient relatives, from ancient speech to medicinal wisdom. For quite some time, scientists have been intrigued by the question of whether Neanderthals could speak and engage in complex communication. Recent genetic studies have uncovered a fascinating detail. Neanderthals possessed the FOXB2 gene, 
a crucial element for speech, language, and tool development in modern humans. This discovery strongly suggests that Neanderthals were indeed capable of sophisticated communication, similar to our Homo sapiens ancestors. But it's not just about genes. Evidence supporting Neanderthals' communication skills also stems from their social behaviors and group dynamics. Neanderthals exhibited care for sick or injured group members and even buried their dead, both indicating complex social behaviors that likely required effective communication. Moreover, their hunting strategies were not just a haphazard pursuit of prey. The sophisticated tactics employed by Neanderthals demanded coordinated efforts and efficient communication among group members. While we can't precisely replicate their speech, the available evidence strongly leans towards the idea that Neanderthals communicate through speech, challenging the stereotype that depicts them solely as meat-eaters. Archaeological evidence contradicts the idea of Neanderthals being exclusively carnivorous. Their food choices were remarkably diverse, ranging from meats of various animals to fish and plant-based foods like fruits, nuts, seeds, and tubers. This dietary flexibility allowed them to adapt to diverse environments and climates, showcasing their resourcefulness in exploiting the available resources. The dietary habits of Neanderthals become even more intriguing when compared to the more specialized diets of some modern humans. Neanderthals demonstrated a remarkable ability to process a wide range of food sources, a trait that would have been advantageous in their often challenging and unpredictable environments. Beyond their diets, Neanderthals displayed a rudimentary understanding of medicine. Analysis of dental plaque has revealed traces of chamomile and yarrow, suggesting that they used these plants for their medicinal properties. Both chamomile and yarrow have anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving properties, indicating that Neanderthals recognized and utilized the healing potential of certain plants as a form of medicine. In essence, the accumulating evidence challenges the outdated view of Neanderthals as primitive beings. Instead, it paints a picture of them as sophisticated and resourceful individuals, capable of communication, adaptation, and even an early form of medicinal knowledge. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. In the lush valleys of an ancient land where mammoths roamed freely and dense forests whispered secrets, a tribe of Neanderthals led an existence that defied the expectations of their time. These were not our typical prehistoric beings. They were eccentric, curious, and known for their peculiar habits that left neighboring tribes scratching their heads. At the heart of the Neanderthal settlement stood Grok, a spirited and imaginative caveman with wild, untamed hair that matched the chaos within his mind. Grok was the tribe's unofficial inventor, constantly dreaming up strange contraptions that had his fellow Neanderthals both fascinated and bewildered. One day, Grok unveiled his latest creation, the wheel o a circular contraption made from a giant, smooth stone. As the Neanderthals gathered around, Grok explained his vision for a world where they could effortlessly transport heavy loads without breaking a sweat. The tribe was skeptical, to say the least. They eyed the wheel with suspicion, uncertain of its purpose. But Grok was undeterred. He placed the wheel o on a slope, hoping to demonstrate its potential. With a triumphant shout, Grok gave the contraption a mighty push expecting it to roll gracefully down the incline. Instead, the wheel spun erratically, zigzagging in unpredictable directions. The Neanderthals burst into laughter, unable to contain their amusement at Grok's comical creation. Little did they know, Grok had unintentionally stumbled upon the precursor to a device that would revolutionize transportation centuries later. But Grok wasn't discouraged. He embraced the laughter, and turned it into a tribe-wide event. Every week, the Neanderthals gathered to witness Grok's latest invention, from the fire frizzler to the leafy floaty. These eccentricities made the Neanderthals the most talked-about tribe in the ancient world. Other tribes looked on in surprise and confusion as the Neanderthals engaged in peculiar rituals, such as the dance of the glowing mushrooms and the whispering stones ceremony. But it wasn't all fun and games. The Neanderthals had a serious side, too. They were master foragers and skilled hunters, 
using their unique blend of creativity and pragmatism to thrive in the unforgiving prehistoric landscape. Grok's eccentricities, it seemed, were just one aspect of a tribe that had found a delicate balance between survival and innovation. As the seasons changed and the world around them evolved, the Neanderthals continued to march to the beat of their drum, leaving behind a legacy that defied the stereotypes of their time, the weird things that Neanderthals did, the laughter they shared, and the inventions that were ahead of their era painted a picture of a tribe that embraced the unconventional, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of prehistory. What are your thoughts on the weird things that Neanderthals did? Let us have your opinions in the comments below. The Neanderthal Bone Flute Secret In the captivating year of 1995, an intrepid team of researchers embarked on an archaeological adventure into the mystical depths of Divya Babe, aptly named the Witch Cave, nestled in the picturesque landscapes of Slovenia. Their quest led them to deposits believed to have been untouched for 40,000 to 60,000 years, where a remarkable discovery awaited them. Amidst the ancient remnants, the researchers unearthed not just any bone but the femur of a juvenile cave bear, adorned with an enigmatic series of small holes on one side. This seemingly mundane find took a fantastical turn when experts discerned that they had stumbled upon the fragmented remains of a flute-like musical instrument. Astonishingly, the age and location whispered a secret. They attributed the creation of this primitive melody maker to none other than Homo, the mysterious Neanderthals, rather than our Homo sapiens kin. This revelation became a pivotal chapter in the narrative of our understanding of Neanderthals. Once unfairly cast as brutish and unsophisticated, these newfound musical maestros painted a picture of a culture nuanced with aesthetic sensibilities. The notion that Neanderthals not only crafted but also played musical instruments for their entertainment or in solemn ritualistic gatherings hinted at a depth of cultural complexity that rivaled our own. The bone flute, with its meticulously carved holes, became a testament to the Neanderthals' artistic endeavors and challenged preconceived notions. Crafting such an instrument required not only dexterity, but also an abstract understanding of acoustics and tonality. Some researchers even dare to propose that this musical prowess hinted at a higher plane of motor skills and intellectual capacity among our ancient relatives. Yet as with any archaeological intrigue, skepticism dances on the periphery. Naysayers argue that the holes in the bone could be the result of nature's culinary indulgence, with hyenas feasting on a young cave bear. Others raise eyebrows at the uncertainties surrounding the precise timing of the bone's transformation into a musical marvel. As the scientific community engages in a symphony of debates, the enigma of the Divya Bay bone flute persists. The allure of uncovering the true genesis of this ancient musical relic continues to tantalize our imagination. Beyond the scientific discourse, the undeniable truth remains. Musical instruments, whether created by Neanderthals or Homo sapiens, stand as timeless emblems of our shared human journey, transcending the epics that separate us from our enigmatic ancestors, beyond stone tools and survival skills. The exploration of Neanderthal burial grounds has unearthed fascinating insights into their culture and beliefs. Certain Neanderthal skeletons were discovered in what seems to be deliberately arranged burial sites, indicating their involvement in some form of burial ritual. The purpose behind these burials remains uncertain, sparking ongoing debates among researchers. Some speculate that the Neanderthals may have been motivated by mourning, religious beliefs, or a practical method to ward off scavengers. Interestingly, some Neanderthal burial sites have revealed the inclusion of grave goods, such as animal bones or stone tools. These artifacts suggest the possibility that Neanderthals held beliefs in an afterlife or some form of spiritual connection. This burial practice challenges the stereotype of Neanderthals as primitive, offering a glimpse into their complex and sophisticated culture. Recent findings have unveiled a more multifaceted picture of Neanderthals. Not only were they proficient in tool-making and knowledgeable about medicinal plants, but they also exhibited artistic expression. Cave paintings discovered in modern-day Spain, predating the arrival of Homo sapiens, 
indicate a capacity for artistic creation among Neanderthals. This challenges the perception of them as mere utilitarian beings, showcasing their technical and cognitive skills. In addition to cave paintings, a potential musical instrument resembling a flute has been unearthed at a Neanderthal site in Slovenia. While the idea of Neanderthals creating music is still debated, the discovery suggests the possibility of artistic and creative expression in their culture. Genetic research has further broadened our understanding of Neanderthals. The presence of the Fox P2 gene, associated with speech and language development in humans, indicates their capability for spoken communication. This challenges the outdated view of Neanderthals as cognitively inferior, emphasizing their capacity for complex communication, information sharing, and social bonding. Neanderthals exhibited remarkable adaptability, thriving in diverse environments from the icy tundra of Ice Age Europe to the warmer Mediterranean climate. Their ability to develop skills, technology, and social structures enabled them to successfully exploit the resources of these varied landscapes, showcasing their resilience and intelligence over hundreds of thousands of years before the eventual dominance of Homo sapiens. Observations of caring behavior towards injured or sick group members, coupled with their burial practices, suggest the existence of complex social structures among Neanderthals. These social networks played a crucial role in their survival, providing support, protection, and resources during challenging times. The presence of the Fox P2 gene underscores their ability to communicate through spoken language, facilitating cooperation and collaboration within their groups an essential factor in navigating the demanding environments they inhabit. Ancient diets, compassionate care, and enigmatic burial rituals. Scientists embark on a fascinating journey to unravel the mysteries of extinct species, employing innovative methods that go beyond the conventional study of bones and teeth. In their quest to understand the Neanderthals, researchers explore the intriguing world of ancient diets, not just by examining tartar on fossilized teeth and bone collagen, but by delving into the unexpected realm of fossilized fecal matter. This unconventional approach yields surprising insights. Neanderthals were not bound by a singular diet, but instead adapted to the bounty offered by their surroundings. Their culinary choices, ranging from meat and fish to various plants, were dictated by the diverse landscapes they inhabited. Coastal communities indulged in aquatic delights, Forest dwellers savored a mix of plants and small game, while those on the Mediterranean steppes pursued the hunt for large mammals. Beyond mere sustenance, Neanderthals displayed a nuanced relationship with the plant kingdom. Evidence suggests they were early practitioners of medicinal plant use, with traces of anti-inflammatory chamomile and yarrow found in the dental plaque of these ancient beings. The interest deepens as they delve into the communal care practices of Neanderthals. Consider the case of Nandi, a resilient individual who, despite losing an arm in his youth, faced additional challenges like broken legs, partial blindness, hearing loss, and a degenerative disease. Experts believe Nandi survived into his 30s or 40s, a feat deemed impossible without the support of his community. This hints at a compassionate side of Neanderthals, who likely aided their ailing peers. Yet when communal care fell short, Neanderthals seemingly resorted to a ritualistic practice, burial. The intentional arrangement of remains and the discernible absence of marks from animal teeth on the fossils imply a purposeful act to shield their deceased from predators. The question of whether this was an expression of mourning, a religious rite, or a pragmatic measure to safeguard the living remains open, adding an air of mystique to the Neanderthals' burial practices. In between life and death, Neanderthals inadvertently left us with a time capsule of their existence. The preservation of their remains, despite the challenges of the ages, speaks to a profound and enigmatic aspect of their culture, inviting us to speculate on the deeper meaning behind their actions. Masters of the hunt, architects of extinction, Neanderthals often envisioned as simple beings, were exceptional hunters, showcasing a unique combination of skills in capturing games, and impressive mental abilities for coordinating attacks. A detailed study by Dutch researcher Gerrit Dusseldorp highlighted their skills in hunting even the most elusive game, including large, powerful animals and herding species. 
What's interesting is that the fractures found on Neanderthal bones resembled those observed in professional rodeo performers, adding a layer of fascination to their physical strength. Beyond sheer brawn, Neanderthals exhibited remarkable hand mastery, suggesting a sophisticated ability to wield hunting tools with precision. Their hunting strategies were not very brute force, but calculated procedures, as demonstrated by a 2011 study revealing their awareness of reindeer migration patterns. They timed their presence in specific hunting locations based on the seasonal movement of their prey, reflecting a level of strategic intelligence. In the realm of mega-hunting, Neanderthals weren't just facing average challenges. They took on mammoths, colossal relatives of modern elephants weighing up to a staggering 12,000 pounds. A 2019 study added a captivating twist by uncovering molecular signs of adaptation to cold environments shared between Neanderthals and woolly mammoths. This parallel evolution from African ancestors to cope with the frigid climates of Ice Age Eurasia paints a vivid picture of their survival strategies. The narrative becomes even more captivating when we delve into the interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans. While it's a well-known fact, recent research from 2016 tantalizingly suggests that these intermingling encounters occurred much earlier, around 100,000 years ago in the Middle East or Arabian Peninsula. The revelation comes from the analysis of the DNA of a Neanderthal woman found in the Altai Mountains of Siberia, providing a tangible link to our shared genetic history. Adding a touch of drama to this ancient romance, newer research provocatively proposes that interbreeding may have played a role in the downfall of Neanderthals. The idea that they might have mated themselves to extinction, diluting their unique genetic code through prolonged interactions with modern humans adds a layer of mystery to their ultimate fate. Understanding these difficulties not only contributes to our knowledge of when Neanderthal DNA entered the human story, but also serves as an exciting chapter in the mysterious end of the Neanderthal saga, the enigmatic fire ballet of Neanderthals. Once upon an ancient period, the mastery of fire wasn't an exclusive artistry performed solely by Homo sapiens. Neanderthals, in their prime, were also skilled in astrology. In a riveting 2011 study, elegantly documented in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, intrepid researchers from the University of Colorado Boulder meticulously examined 141 hearth sites scattered across the European landscape. What they unearthed was nothing short of a prehistoric spectacle. A cavalcade of evidence showcasing the Neanderthals' enduring romance with fire complete with charred bones, heated stone relics, and lingering echoes of charcoal. This early performance, a fiery ballet, unfolded as far back as 400,000 years ago. But the Neanderthals weren't merely fire dancers reveling in the warmth of their flames. They were ingenious breadwinners, wielding fire as a mystical tool for craftsmanship. Neanderthals fashioned tools with a concoction of pitch, a natural adhesive brewed from the incinerated bark of birch trees. It wasn't just about cooking, it was an ancient alchemy, a dance of elements as they attached wooden shafts to stone fragments, revealing a profound mastery over the transformative power of fire. Dispelling the conception of the inarticulate Neanderthal, these mysterious beings were not mere cave-dwelling grumblers. Though their word book might not rival Shakespearean prose, their ability for fine communication was underscored by the presence of the hyoid bone nestled in their necks, a verbal linchpin shared with modern humans. As they spoke, their throats, sculpted chests, and upright postures conjured voices that, while resembling ours, echoed with a distinct timbre, an ancient melody rising from the depths of prehistory. Venturing into the labyrinth of Neanderthal extinction, the plot thickens with two captivating theories. In the 2017, researchers propose a dramatic twist involving population dynamics and timing, a slow tango with Homo sapiens until the competitive exclusion principle, that ecological doyen, declared the victor. In this evolutionary drama, Homo sapiens played the role of usurper, deftly occupying the coveted corner. Yet in the 2018 sequel, a different narrative unfolds, an enthralling story of climatic mysteries. Enterprising scientists spelunk through caves, their quest revealing a climatic melody of icy crescendos and arid interludes. 
These ancient meteorological notes coincide mysteriously with periods when Neanderthal tools vanished from the archaeological stage. While causation remains elusive, the correlation is a tantalizing trail of breadcrumbs, beckoning to a realm of climatic conspiracies and mysterious vanishing acts. The Neanderthals, it seems, left the stage not with a mere whimper, but with the echo of an environmental encore, forever etching their enigmatic exit into the annals of prehistoric legend. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.